As of 27th of April 2023, the government has raised additional buyer stamp duty for foreigners to 60%. Hey guys, Maverick here and welcome to another new video. This will just be a short video covering the cooling measures that just came up on midnight 27th April 2023. So if you guys don't know additional buyer stamp duty or ABSD, it's a tax imposed on residential property buyers on top of buyer stamp duty or BSD. But they are only for certain groups of buyers. Essentially, the only rates that remain unchanged are for Singaporeans buying their first residential property, PRs who are buying their first residential property, and lastly, the ABSD for housing developers have also remained unchanged. As seen from this chart, ABSD for Singaporeans buying their second, third, and subsequent properties have increased. ABSD for PRs buying their second, third, and subsequent properties have also increased. And ABSD has increased by a whopping 30% for entities, buyers who are buying under trust, and also foreigners. So how does this affect the market? Foreign buyers make up for 6.9% of all residential property purchases in quarter 1 of 2023. This is up from 3.1% back in quarter 1 of 2022. And this is the highest we've seen since the first quarter of 2018 when it hit 7.3%. As the world is slowly opening up post-COVID, we were actually expecting more and more foreign buyers to come to Singapore for safe property investing. And as seen from the recent numbers, that trajectory proved to be true. But with this increase of 30% in ABSD, foreign buyers now have to think thrice before allocating their resources in residential properties in Singapore. This is pretty much a preemptive measure to curb foreign demand of residential properties here and hopefully will help to stabilize the prices here in Singapore. This, however, will mainly affect properties in the core central region since buyers for mass market condos in the OCR and RCR are mostly Singaporeans or PRs. So I think for many foreign investors, instead of paying 60% ABSD, most will find other ways of investing in properties such as buying commercial or industrial units, you know, shop houses or factories, which also have the potential to appreciate in the long run. Developers who have developments in the core central region will now also have to price their units a bit more attractively since I think a bulk of their original buyers will now look elsewhere for investment opportunities and they have to market themselves to local buyers. Next up, affluent buyers who are buying under trust for their children will now have to fork out a remissible ABSD of 65% up from the original 35%. How this works is that if you want to buy a property under your children's name, not only do you have to pay for the property in full cash, you will also have to first fork out 65% of the value of your home to IRAS, which will be refunded back to you later on. But can you imagine how cash rich you need to be to be able to do that? If a property is $1.5 million, you'd have to fork out $975,000 in ABSD upfront first. And I would think that not many have the financial capability to do so. Of course, this wouldn't really affect the ultra rich, but those that are caught somewhere in the middle would definitely have to think twice before buying a property under trust. Lastly, for entities or companies buying residential properties in Singapore, they will fork out 65% now as ABSD instead of the earlier 35%. Now, this is just my hunch, but I think this will affect housing developers the most. When a developer has difficulty in selling off their development within the five-year mark, there are a few things they could do. Firstly, they could pay the 35% ABSD based on the land price, uh, which I doubt they will do because this will be a very very huge sum. Secondly is to give large discounts to buyers to attract them to buy the leftover units or they can have another entity buy the units from them and rent it out for rental income if they aren't able to sell it. Now this was originally 35% of the value of the home. But of course, now that this has increased to 65%, developers may be more incentivized to price their units a bit more competitively to make sure that they are able to sell out before the five-year mark. So how will this affect you as a consumer in today's market? If you are looking for residential property in the core central region, I think this is going to be your chance. The market will take some time to adjust to the measures, but I think the prices will be fairly competitive in the next one year or so. If you are in the market for a new launch property, developers can no longer price their units too aggressively and have to be a little more reasonable, which is overall a good sign for buyers. Lastly, if you are currently holding on to any big quantum commercial or industrial properties, this may be a good time to cash out as we'll see the 
foreign demand spill into the commercial and industrial market. Overall, I think this is a nice move from the government. We are letting the mass market local demand decide the cause of our property market, shielding it from external factors. And I think that's only going to make the market just that little bit healthier. But of course, don't expect any major price movements, especially in the OCR and RCR. Okay, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys learned something new. Do share this with your family and friends. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comment section down below. Or you can contact me for a free consultation. My number is flashing on the screen right now. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!